Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Pump. In the first half of this episode, we talk about why poor gut health may be harming your gains, how David Goggins uses hate to motivate himself, as well as other topics. In the second half of the show, we answer four questions from our Mind Pump Media Instagram account. Questions such as, do body types matter when creating nutrition and training programs? When is it better to hire a coach rather than follow a MAPS program? Can I train for a bodybuilding show and a half marathon at the same time? And which is better for you, whole milk or low fat milk? Finally, would you like to build your butt or your biceps or even become a better personal trainer? Well, we have some free guides that go into detail on those topics as well as others right at mindpumpfree.com. Go over there, check those out, and enjoy the show. You can forget about building muscle, burning body fat, improving athletic performance if you have poor gut health. Mm. Yeah. Poor gut health will get in the way of almost any physical pursuit. So- if you have digestive issues, heartburn, chronic uh, constipation, diarrhea, Bless you just you don't dog. feel good in your gut. You sneeze a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. These are all signs. It does control. It is, a, it is the seat of the immune system. But yeah, a poor gut means you have uh, <clears throat> poor absorption of nutrients. It means you have systemic inflammation. You have a chronic low-level uh, stress signal being set throughout the body. Hormones are going to be thrown off. Production of catecholamines will be off. Serotonin will be off. I mean, you can pretty much forget about whatever physical goal you have if your gut is off. So don't that's gotta ignore be a, the signs. That, I mean, this is just it. part of it, right? Like most people will just like blaze through the day. Like, oh, wow, yeah. You know, I didn't wake up so well this morning. I had diarrhea, but you know, uh, I'm just going to power through. Yeah. You know, this has finally made its way into the um, bodybuilding community even. Yeah. It was like ignored for, I mean, at least. So we. When we talked about it, we were like groundbreakers in the space. Oh, yeah. Nobody. Yeah, said nobody it, and even it's still not. I mean, I still think that it's. I don't What would you say? Like uh, the percentage of uh, fitness talking heads, like how how prevalent do you think it is? It's half. You think we've 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 passed yeah. over the threshold of more than half of people? I would say half. Are speaking to it as a, an important yeah, factor. I would, I would say half. I don't know if they prioritize it, but. I saw so I, I, it wasn't that long ago. Like when we started the podcast and we talked about gut health, nobody, nobody in the fitness space was talking about it. And yeah, people, just wellness people. Yeah. Some of the wellness people were talking about. Now, if I go back even further, when I owned my wellness studio, I was very, I mean, in hindsight, I was very uh, blessed because I always had, um, you know, my market in mind. And I, I realized that in order to better serve my market, there was value in different modalities. So at the very least, I was at, at least aware enough of that. Now, personally, I knew none of this other stuff. I was a fitness guy. I knew exercise, macros, <clears throat> calories. That was it. But I knew there was value in other things. So I actually had somebody who did gut health testing, who worked with people's gut health in my facility. And I thought it was like, whatever. But because I worked with this person on a daily basis and I saw people's results and I would overhear conversations because it was a small facility, I just learned a lot and I started to realize its value. And this was like 15 years ago, 20 years ago when she was talking about the stuff and people thought it was crazy and it's out there and what are you doing? And then I would see the benefits. And then I, of course I had my own gut health issues, which really solidified its value. Um, but yeah, nobody was talking about it just seven, eight years ago. Not really. So, but now everybody's starting to talk about it because it's a big deal. And again, if you're trying to like build muscle or burn body fat, you could kiss that goodbye if this is off, if this is off, forget about it. Is there, is there, um, do we have studies like to show like comparisons to, you know, somebody who is on a, a diet to, uh, lose body fat and they're, they have a healthy gut and then they, and then, you know, and they test it for, let's say 12 weeks or whatever. And they show somebody who's got a compromised gut. And then they tr they're trying to do it like the, how 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 dramatic of a difference their their results could be. Well, do we, we don't, have stuff like that. We yet? don't exactly have those, but we have some pretty interesting studies where we take a gut microbiome from mm. one um, animal and put it in another, and that animal will get leaner. Haven't they done studies of that where they've encapsulated um, okay, so poop, I'm, basically, I'm, and then uh, yes. taken somebody else's bacteria? That's Not right. a person, though, a rat, right? These are all rat no, studies, No, there's human they? studies, too. Oh, there is human yeah, studies. Yeah, there's some those. human studies that'll show changes in 
mood, uh, changes in body composition, hormones. Is that, is that why it still hasn't been fully adopted, do you think, because a lot of the research has been done in animal studies and so we haven't been- Bro, able- the gut is so complex well, that, that too, right? like, for us to figure out what the right fingerprint is for you in the moment, let alone- on an ongoing basis, like there's a lot of kind of like the universe and alien argument. I feel it's like. yeah, dude. It's there's so like much. Uh, there's so so complex. We have no idea. We know we have an idea of like some microbes have beneficial effects, and we stick to those in most probiotics. We know, for example, uh, that there's bifido and lactobacillus uh, <clears throat> strains of bacteria that seem to have beneficial effects uh, in people, but we don't know what the fingerprint looks like. I mean, the best we could do is look at your poop. But that doesn't even tell us a whole story. Old story. That kind of tells us the bacteria that died, not what's alive now. Right. We also don't know the the interaction of each of those bacteria with each other, and there's so many of them and so much going on. And then fungus that's in your system, and then your body's own, you know, physiology and all that stuff. Yeah. I think we will in the future, though. Yeah. You know, we'll know. You know what's weird? They do so there's treatment facilities overseas. They don't do this here because it's real risky. But people will go and do some of these fecal transplants in other countries, or they'll get like parasites on purpose because it cures their autoimmune, you know, yeah. issues. Rebuilds a, sort of their stomach lining, that relationship between, um, yeah. So, so if that leaky gut syndrome, I've heard that they they go in that direction. It's weird. It's really weird, and there's a there's a lot of potential there. So we'll see what happens. But like on the probiotic front, for example, um, <clears throat> here's what's weird: dead beneficial probiotics seem to have some benefit. So you could take a probiotic and the bacteria is dead and you'll still get some benefit, which is weird. Just the presence of these dead bacteria. Now you're not going to get as much of a benefit as if the bacteria were alive and you're not going to get as much of a benefit uh, when the bacteria isn't survive, doesn't survive the digestive tract and gets deposited in the, in the parts of the body you want it to. So, right. right. So it's the delivery system really makes a difference with Huge. some of these probiotics. Huge. Right? So okay, this sound this is probably a terrible question. I'm gonna get in trouble for this. Um, is seed dead or la- live bacteria that seed we get? is seed is uh, live? Oh, it all, is live for all intents and purposes, and, and it can stay alive in the capsule like that in the bottle. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to do anything. No, that. it's like they're hibernating. Um, and then the capsule itself was designed to release the bacteria where you are supposed to release it, so it survives some of the digestive. So remember, remember with seed they have like a. A, di- a gut simulator. Artificial metabolism simulator. Yeah, yeah, it'll show how long it takes. So to I knew that about it, but I couldn't remember if it was live yeah. or dead bacteria. Yeah. Now, are is that common with most probiotics? Usually or? you'd have to get a refrigerated probiotic for that to happen. Okay. Um, but even dead, again, even dead probiotics have some benefit. So a lot of people will take a probiotic and see benefit regardless. But if you get a really good probiotic, it's weird. More benefit. It's dead and you can still get Yeah. In, in some cases. Do we understand why? No. Huh. Like the presence of the bacteria does something to the immune system and your body reacts in a particular way. Now, the presence of live bacteria obviously changes the microbiome or offsets the overdevelopment of other certain bacteria. Um, and then, you know, maybe they produce their own, you know, what's going on. Do they survive long enough to stay? It's not like you repopulate your gut necessarily either. That's why you take probiotics on a regular basis because then they eventually die and then you got to put them back in there. It's so complex. It's very weird. It's a, it's yeah. a, it's really a science that's interesting. Plus, you don't and know the bacteria have their own cravings, and and uh, yeah, they've, yeah. That's what's so weird. It's like it's you, you you feel like like how much of my brain I'm am I consciously driving versus like you know bacteria. You have more bacteria cells in you than human cells. Yeah, and to think that they haven't evolved to influence your behaviors to to promote their own survivability. Right. It's silly. So to, to populate you with beneficial bacteria, it seems to me like that should be a big uh, emphasis. Well, I now, think just try it and see for yourself. Like I've used, uh, uh, I don't know, a hundred, <laughs> at least a hundred different probiotic brands because I have, Damn. You know, and seed is the first one that uh, I noticed consistent good results from. And I don't get these, eventually with a probiotic, I'll take it sometimes get good results and then I'll get bad results. And I think because there's like an overgrowth that happens or something, I'm not quite sure. Mm-hmm. Seed is the first one that I could just take all the time and always have like good benefits from. Now I'm not. You're like consistent. You're you're really good about like every day taking it. Um, I've trained myself to be good about doing it when I know I'm going to eat something that is going to offend my gut. Right? Like I know that like if I don't take anything, like it's uh, I have issues afterwards. 
And so I've at least trained myself that, okay, if I'm going to go eat this, knowing that it's not ideal, uh, and I can see a significant difference in how I feel afterwards. Now, do you, Sal, I mean, Justin, are you like Sal, where you take it religiously, or are you inconsistent? How are you with it? Yeah, I'm more like, an, I guess, reactive with it instead of proactive with it, yeah. kind of like you're saying, yeah. uh, where I'll notice things are off, and then I'm like, oh, no, I got to go through a protocol again and really be diligent with, like, taking the probiotic and, you know, helping my gut uh, kind of uh, get back on track. So it's usually, like, react. I would like to say I was, like, you know, super uh, consistent with it, but... You know that's that's usually how I take. Yeah, it. no. Being honest with the you guys audience, I'm just, you guys aren't big supplement takers. No, I'm, I'm no. just I'm terrible with all. It doesn't matter if it's Crete. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's. the I know best. it would benefit me more if I was. I just you know. Is that I mean is that a fact, Sal? Like I mean, would Justin and I be in a in a, a way better position if we were just really consistent? Probably, about doing yeah, because you have acute anti-inflammatory effects, which is probably what you guys are noticing when you take it when you have a meal that's bad. Yeah, it also could probably prevent you know, whatever bacterial overgrowth from happening in that moment or within the next few days. But if you did it on a consistent basis, you'd be set up better um, than you would if you just did it on an, like a, on a semi-regular basis or occasional basis. But you yeah. guys just aren't supplement takers. Yeah. No, I noticed that if I want you guys one. to take something regularly to test, I have to be the one to control. Like I have to be yeah, the ones yeah. to give it to you guys, <laughs> yeah, which yeah. is what I'll do. I'll come yeah, in. I don't know what that is. I think it's, I grew up like my parents like has those like a uh, pill Cases. trays and like, they're just all oh, like always like putting stuff down. I just, that, that to me was so unappealing. I, well, I actually want to avoid that at all costs. I mean, I think I'm not sure, but I, I think we're more normal. You are. I don't think most no. people are as regimen as you the are. The only other it. person I know that's as consistent as I am with supplements is Doug. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know anybody else like that. Doug like measures them out, plans them, does the whole thing. Uh, my uncle would be the other person. I don't know anybody else that's like that. I, no, I'm I'm on the my other end. My mom got into like homeopathic stuff, you know. And no. So I was just like, Pfft. I'm excessive though. I get I experiment. <laughs> I like taking things for the hell of it. I like to take 15 different things at one time. So well, I have my own dysfunctional. Relationship. I mean, you're. I mean, you're like. I I love that you are like that. It's nice to have somebody that's a close friend who you also trust is knowledgeable that does things with like that. It reminds me of like Ben Greenfield. I mean, I feel like you and Ben are oh, some of my favorite people to talk to because. I know how healthy of a person you are. I know how much you, and I know how much you prioritize the big rocks first. And so I'm always curious about your opinion yeah. on, you know, now I tease you about like, you're like the guy who was like, as soon as you take, like, I feel so, I noticed something. I noticed this. Like, <laughs> like, bro, come on, calm down, dude. <laughs> like, so I know I tease you, but I, I genuinely am interested to hear what you have to say about it because you're not just some random dude. But hey, up until now, if I've said, you guys got to try this, I'd say probably nine out of 10 times you guys notice. Yeah, we'll try it. There's like a one one out of 10 times where you guys might not like it or it doesn't feel right, but nine out of 10 times you guys will. That's why this whole like peptide world now that I've been introduced to mm -hmm. is a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because it's fascinating. I can learn about it. I can talk about it. It's like endless reading now I'm doing with it. It's just so big and, and crazy. Bad because now I have this like connection to an endless supply of different types of peptides. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I said you guys need to kind of watch me make sure I don't go limitless crazy. options. Yeah. yeah. I don't go too crazy <laughs> yeah. with all this stuff. All right. Today's giveaway program is maps symmetry. Here's how you can win access. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And what we'll do is go through the comments and we'll declare the winner in the comments section. Then you'll see if you won Map Symmetry for free. Also, we put together these three workout bundles. All three of them give you up to nine months of planned workouts. All three of them are discounted $300 or more off. So massive discounts because it is January, so it's a big month for fitness. Anyway, if you're interested in checking these out or signing up, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Dude, I have, I have to tell you guys this uh, about my son. So it was really funny. Um, so this last you know week or so, Katrina and I battled a cold. It seems like maybe he's starting to battle a little bit. And Katrina's like, man, it just. It, she's like, I forget. Like our son is so good that when he's even slightly off, I get like this parent like, oh my god, what do I do? And she's yeah. just like, because he's just he's so consistently good, and then when he's off even the slightest bit, it's like, what is wrong with you, kid? Like, but he uh, he is, and she said it like we were just talking. She's like. I said, hey, how's Max doing today? And she's like, God, he is just so moody. Oh, like, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. 
And what it looks like. Where do you get that from? Anyway? I, 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 well, you know, what, it, what made me laugh about it, because I know that's the joke around here with me, is just like, I wonder, did I did I have these type of songs? I have to ask my mom if, if she would describe me the same way. And what it looks like. So it was yesterday, I go to work. Yeah, what does a three-year-old whose booty look Again, like? I'll tell you what it looks like, right? So um, I... I, yesterday I went to work and I drove the truck. Katrina drove the truck the day before. And so I had a lot of Max's stuff in the back seat. And when I took off, I didn't even realize it. He's on, he's going through this phase right now where, uh, so he has this like giant T-Rex. He's got a, a stuffed animals, uh, Stegosaurus. And then he's got a, you know, uh, Mr. Grinch. That's like, and they're, and they're like kind of bigger, like for him, they're like life size, right? Yeah. They're like his size and he, they're his friends. And he brings them, you know, when he plays <laughs> with awesome. his monster trucks, he brings them, he puts them in a circle. Oh, that's and, great. Yeah, he is a new phase. He just started doing this. It's funny. Breakfast, he he puts all three of them in their stools, and then he sits in the fourth stool and he eats. Oh, that's so it. awesome. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Talk to him. How does he interact oh, yeah. with them? Oh, yeah, great. yeah. So he interacts with is them. Is he like you? Is he telling what to do? And shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he does. So it's kind of funny to watch, right? And that's He's like Katrina, telling what to do. You're going to sell Katrina this. Katrina, so Katrina remembers me sharing that with her about like some old footage of of me, like, come on, friends, like you know, organizing the neighborhood kids and stuff. So she's like, I think it's so cute because I remember when we first started dating, you showed me that video of you when you so were. So he's really, doing that too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so he's kind of doing that. Well, anyways, uh, I didn't even notice it until I got to work. You know, uh, T Rex was in my back seat, and so was Mr. Grinch, and they were in the the back seat. And I took them took them to work, and she's like, you know, he came out and he was just like, you could see he was just so pissed that his things were. And he just just gets a, an attitude in short about every little thing. And like everything begins to irritate him for the day. And she goes, <laughs> and so she had told me that before I came home. So I knew it. So I cute. walked in the door with T-Rex and uh so and mr grinch yeah and i was and i and i started playing the characters like they wanted to come to work with me that's why they came <laughs> and when he saw me walk through the door and i was holding him the look on his face was just this like you could tell he, he looked like he wanted to cry and he was so angry and irritated with me and so i started playing the characters <laughs> and everything like that and you and you could see he wanted to be really like pissed about it but because i was playing into it he kind of like let it go. Didn't say anything. Wasn't happy. You know, asked him to ask me to put him over next to him, and he was eating. And she had these uh, those uh, I think they're called Asian pears or whatever that I love, and so does Max. And I saw that she, she had some of them, and I was like, "Ooh, I want one of those." And he just looks at me, then he looks at his mom, and he looks back at me, and he just like starts. To, he gets that, uh, that that you know that famous Michael Jordan meme of him crying. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, made, he made that face you know like, look at me just sorry and that's not like him normally he's like okay daddy and he shares and he's that was the last straw oh yeah it was just started crying and i'm like oh my god dude calm the fuck down dude <laughs> I, was just like, I, just, I won't take a, i won't take one of your fuji apples or whatever asian pears whatever so yeah he's got this uh this funny thing when if he's at all off right didn't get a good sleep or he's a little sick just everything He's like, everything yeah. is like, he's on edge on everything, but he's not like screaming, yelling. He's not he's in a bad to, mood. Yeah. He's, he's just yeah. in a bad mood. Well, I think I told you, yeah. Like the other day, like what I noticed about Everett and it's the same lines with that in terms of like knowing yourself really well. And, uh, like Courtney's having a hard time with Everett. I was in a bad mood. You know, I was like, yeah trying to talk to him too. And he was like snappy and blah, blah, blah. And, and like, he didn't want to do anything. We keep suggesting all these things. You want to do this, bud? You want maybe like, um, you know, play with your, your, uh, Play-Doh sand thing and, you know, whatever, like be constructive. Cause we didn't have power. And he's like, you know, pissed off. Cause like, he can't like interact with his friends. And I was like, do you want to wrestle? And he's just like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like do you want to wrestle dude? And he's just like, <laughs> Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of. Just was beating on him, and he's like, "Yay!" <laughs> you know, like he just wanted to get beat up. And so I like, I you know, his birthday's coming up, so I, I'm like, we got to get him a punching bag, dude. Like this, this is energy. He he needs to express that energy and get it out. Like this is just one of those things. Yeah. I had to deal dude, with it. I, I needed that. I got outlet. an idea for you, huh? They sell grappling dummies. Have you seen these? Oh, the ones that you pick up and you slam. You can and, slam them. Yes. They have like joints so you can like twist their arms. That's, you could choke them out. Idea. Yeah. 
Get him a freaking grappling gun. Yeah, gummy. that's funny. Like yeah. they're, they're now. What what is it about? Now you guys are the same way. I don't know if you are the same way like this. What is it about dads that you like? When you see that, you know that. I guess so, so even when I see myself, there's a part of me that wants to, to poke it, poke it, and, and fuck with it. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Because it's Katrina's, fun. Yeah, Katrina's yeah. getting mad at me. Yeah, you know, because I I just know like he's, you he's, test him he's a in bit. one of those moods. I just I, so I mess with it a of lot course. of time. Like he's he was like sitting down and he was watching. Um, what was the oh the I think it was Mr. Grinch Dr. Seuss thing whatever and it was like one of the theme songs and so I started singing it you, you like know? it no yeah, yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> and then I'd stop and then I'd start singing no <laughs> <laughs> calm the fuck down guy relax you know <laughs> Katrina's like stop fucking with him like you know he's in a mood like so <laughs> I just think it's so funny because he's never like that but yeah, then well because it too his friends are gonna do that too right they're gonna tease is him that what it is is it, yeah. is it is it is it like it's not like I like really actively thought about like i'm gonna fuck with my son it's just no, no, no. it's just you, second like nature it's also we're cute. prepping him a little bit yeah, yeah well it's yeah. also cute i mean i'm sure you wouldn't do it past a certain point. no right yeah. like i don't i don't yeah, like exactly. when he get, i push him right to that point where i can yeah. tell he wants to cry then i'm like okay i'll yeah. back off that will back off a him. little bit it's just, cute that's i might my, my, today i dropped my <clears throat> speaking of music i dropped my daughter whenever i drop her off at school bef like as soon as you start pulling up she like reaches up turns the radio way down I'm like, oh <laughs> come on you're Every embarrassed of your music yeah dude it doesn't matter what i'm playing she has to turn it down so when she opens the door, what do you think I do? Brr, turn it over real loud. Uh, <laughs> roll the windows down. <laughs> See you later, honey. Oh, death metal. Oh. I put death metal on. Rah, rah, yeah. rah, rah, bye. Drive off. Now, yeah, what? Like, okay, what is it? What is everybody's kids? I kind of know uh, Breeze because I've, I've heard some of her music. I probably relate probably to some of hers. What is? What do the kids? All your kids listen to? My are older they, kids. Are they in line with you? Are they totally different? Dude, no, they're actually quite it's... in line. My kids are pretty in line. So when they wash dishes, they'll usually put music on. Um, so long as the baby's not sleeping and it's usually rock or alternative and it's, it's from all areas. Er By the way, this is something that I noticed too, with this current generation, when we were younger, because our music was filtered through radio stations, mm -hmm. we either liked, we, we liked a genre because we listened to the rap station or the rock station or whatever. We didn't get a whole wide variety. And then to listen to like different era of music, mm -hmm. Unless your parents listen to it, you really didn't have any way of hearing music yeah. from different eras. Well, because of YouTube and technology, kids today are so their 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 scope of music is so wide. So my kids are constantly bringing me music that's from the '60s, the '70s, yeah. the '80s, the '90s, and it's it's alternative, it's hip hop, it's it's rock, it's and it's it's not weird. When I was a kid, you either like rock. This or is hip -hop one of my favorite features of Spotify. Yeah. Like if you listen, if you find something on Spotify totally. that you really like, they they have all the other artists that they recommend, and they they I mean it's and, and it doesn't matter what era. Yeah, it doesn't matter what era. I know. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool. So. Yeah. So it's interesting because like Ethan and Ever are different. Like Ethan's been through phases of like um, kind of strange. He'll like rock, but then he likes some weird like techno like like video game music stuff and then he just doesn't even care he doesn't even, it's like it doesn't interest him really he's like into other things and whereas you know everett's a lot more musically inclined and he'll he loves because i've i've definitely influenced him a lot with like a lot of stuff so it's like classic rock or it's grunge or it's all that stuff and he's starting to sing it now in the shower which is hilarious you know we'll catch him like singing a popular song really? and like, yeah <laughs> so he like told me the other day too he's like my top three it's like uh, Led Zeppelin's Black Dog, and then he really likes. Um, uh, I think it was it was a Royal Blood song, and then um, uh, these are good choices. Yeah, dude, it was really good. But the, but then You're the like third so one proud. sucked. It was Cotton, <laughs> Cotton Eye Joe. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like cool, bud. Catchy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> two out of three. Two out of three. He's like, Dad, right? Give me a name, a couple of like, oh, <laughs> like, Plus ten like points. This? Plus ten points. Yeah. Minus fifty points, son. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How dare you? No, it's, they have such a wide breadth and, uh, uh, and scope of music. My kids will show me music all the time. Dad, have you heard this before? I'm like, Riders of the Storm. It's the Doors. Oh, oh, it's the Doors. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you never heard that before. Or you'll play a song that they'll hear in a commercial or something like that. Oh, people make. What are those videos when montage videos? That's a montage video song. I'm like, this is a, a great song. What are you talking? It's all YouTube based mm -hmm. yeah. for the younger generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty wild. Nope. No, it's cool to see that these traits uh, in your kid. My oldest, he started displaying certain traits for me because he's not exactly like him, but there's a lot of traits that were similar. When I don't remember what grade he was in, fourth grade. He might have been in fourth grade. He was young and we did a parent teacher conference. And the teacher's like, yeah, he, you know, he's doing a great job and everything's good, but can you. There's one thing I'd like to you to talk to your, your son about. I'm like, well, what is it? She goes, well, 
He tries to correct me in front of the class. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, is that you? <laughs> and I'm sitting there and like you know, sweat. You sweat. <laughs> yeah, sweat starting to beat. You know, I'm like, I don't know where he got that hey, from. Huh. Hey, so here's what here's the best part. Interesting. Right? Here's the best part. So I'm like, well, what happened? Exactly? Yeah, was he right? <laughs> and then of course, he come to his defense. Usually, the, though, yeah, he was right. He uh, was right. I, hey, I like, was well. Sweating. He was right. Come on. I was sweating a little bit, and I said, well, what exactly happened? And she explained it to me. She's like, well, I made this mistake, and you know, whatever. And then he was correcting me in front of everybody. I'm like. So you were wrong, and he helped. He kind of helped <laughs> I was like, uh-oh. Yeah, so what's did, the problem? I didn't like it. Yeah. 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 It was in front of the whole class. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my like, okay, god, boy, dude! I, I know dude. they are. There's, they're a lot like you too. They're and their dark sense of humor, dude. Is just oh, I don't. I can't even. I can't. Oh even repeat. god, I love it though. I mean, I think that's so. I mean, so that's got to be so neat because it, you obviously didn't train that. It's not like you're doing dark jokes like that. No, to your not kids, to my but, kids. Yeah, and at that young of an age, so the to to see that. You know, like it manifest itself in them as the as a teenager or whatever like that. You got to be like, here, Whoa. I'll tell you one of the jokes. Yep. It, it, we can edit this out, Doug, if it's too if it's too much. Or well, listen, or if you preface it with they have a dark sense of humor. And no, no, this is the one. This is one I think I can share because other ones I won't even share. <laughs> <laughs> but my daughter comes up to me and she goes, "Why? Why should you? If a, if an orphan invites you to their house for a party, why should you go?" And I said, "Why is that? Because the parents aren't home." All right. That's, oh, that's, 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 that's that. Nice. That's that. Yeah. Terrible joke. And then Bro, the pile on. That. To yeah. me, the, what makes it way more funny is you have to know Alessia. Like, if you've seen yeah. her, she is like this, this sweet kid. This, yeah, this yeah. tiny little cute little quiet yeah. kid that's like oh, no. like you just do not see that coming out of her mouth like i i can't wait to catch that that's why i want we you know we need to do something with marcucci your daughter his yeah, daughter yeah cuz they'll probably jive oh they will they will totally jive yeah. it'll be fun. it'll be fun to watch that, that that'll be fun <laughs> hey did you guys see the did we talk about the the new recommendations from the medical associations on children on obese children did you guys see these no did we talk about these? Oh, no. it was basically talking about like ushering them into like the new like pharmaceutical drugs. Right? Okay, like so, right away, like intervening dude, as soon as possible. Wow. Listen, tell me I wow. wasn't like, right. like rushing it. Tell me that we weren't right one hundred percent on the whole obesity disease and what they're trying to set us up for. That comes out where they're pushing this a disease thing. They're not even trying to hide it. No, they're, next thing that comes out, pharmaceuticals immediately is that they're now recommending surgery. And or pharmaceuticals for children, so 12 and 13 year olds who are obese. They're now recommending that as a treatment. So you take your 12 it's, it's year old, absurd. you take your 12 year old to the doctor, and the doctor sees that your their BMI is high. This will now be, oh, we're going to prescribe your kid, you know, Orlistat, or I think is the one drug. That, you guys know what that is? No. Maybe you can look that up, Doug. Uh, I think the drug that they're recommending is Orlistat, if I'm not mistaken. Dude, I think how, that's the name of it. Like, how evil of a person do you have to be to to write these things? Like where what where where so where here's, is your uh, or the, the, where's your moral in their where's mind. your moral compass as a as a writer and an editor when you get this dropped on your desk and you create some shit around this or like, just the medical associations? What's wrong with you? Yeah, okay, well, so here's it's got to stop somewhere. So I'm like you you don't have to write it, man. That's so crazy. So uh, Doug, as you're looking that up, so here, here's here's what happens. Okay, because I don't think. I do think pharma drives the medical industry at large, but I definitely don't think doctors and obesity experts and stuff are, are evil people. I think at, at large, they're good people trying to help. But what happens is the scope is so narrow that they're looking at these kids who are 12 and 13 and saying, okay, they're obese now. Here are the risks associated with obesity as they get older. Mm -hmm. So the surgery is going to outweigh the potential negatives of obesity. But here's why that scope is so narrow. Yeah. You're taking a 12-year-old and you're considering or assuming they will never change their lifestyle. Right. You're assuming they have no they'll never become empowered and you're also discrediting all of the other potential side effects that have nothing to do with obesity from a surgery or a drug. For example, is the drug called Orlistat? It is. Okay. Orlistat FDA approved too. Yeah. So Orlistat is a drug that you take that blocks the absorption of fat. So this is the one where the side effects are oily stool and oil in your poop or whatever. Okay. Do you know what, what, what it means to block the absorption of fat? You're also blocking the absorption of fatty acids right. and fat-soluble nutrient. nutrients. Yes. So you're going to take children. They're going to be malnutrition. And you're going to cause vitamin D deficiencies or vitamin A deficiencies or vitamin E deficiencies. Oh, but don't worry. We're going to also put them on. But there'll be supplements for Correct. That. Yeah. 
medical medically uh, you know prescribed vitamins or whatever. So and then they're also not considering all the potential effects from the surgery. You're you're messing with their gut and their their digestive system. Are there going to be mood issues with that? What does a surgery tell the kid? What kind of message are you sending you know powerless to the child? You know because whose fault this really is? Parents. Yeah. Yeah. Parents, dude. 100%. Yeah. It's always that, of course. I mean, that's just- It's frustrating because, I mean, yeah, if they would have got um, uh, the right education and upbringing in terms of like, you can handle this and you can uh, take these steps towards a healthier path, you know, like that's, it's, it's just- to, at this point, it's it's totally a powerless message. You know what they, you know sending. What, you know what would make a bigger difference with something like this? J simply saying, and I'm not for this kind of regulation, but I think this will make a bigger impact. Um, heavily processed foods are not allowed to advertise to anybody under the age of 17 or something like that. I bet that would have a bigger impact on childhood obesity than mm -hmm. any other thing that they would do with uh, pharmaceuticals or surgery. I yeah, bet. You know, I don't even know if that, it, well, I mean, I'm sure that would help somewhat. It's, to me, I feel like it's- I know the parents buy it. It's the introduction to a lot of it that probably causes it. I feel yeah. like that. I mean, you 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 give that to a kid at such a young age, and you change their palate, and then they then they then because we're what I get is because it, it, everybody understands what it's like, or anyone who has kids understands what it's like to have like a kid that is just nagging, nagging, nagging all day. You're busy, busy, and so and they're wanting something, and you know if you give it to them that they'll shut up, yeah. that they'll yeah, you stop. You got to say no. Uh, You're the well, parent. That's, but that's where I think this is where this gets out of hand is that they, you choose the, the easy path of, uh, it's just like the thing with tech it's with a slow drip yeah. with the iPad. Yeah, But that means the parents have to change their behaviors. That's why it won't that's happen. Well, yeah. And it means it's going to be more difficult lies. for them. I mean, that's the truth. Like I obviously it would be much easier just to hand my son candy every time he cried about something. Cause if I, if I did, he'd be happy. Which would mean you have candy at home. Yeah. You know, so. that's, that's the big thing because, um, where you find obese parents, you almost always find. Um, obese children. Yeah. Uh, so it's tough. And we also don't teach, this is something I'm more aware of now that I wasn't 10 years ago. We also don't teach uh, food relationships to children the right way in a modern environment. So what that means is when, and this happens when they're real young, once they're past a certain age, then, then it's different. <laughs> then it's more education. And this is what this does for you. And this, you know, does that for you. But when they're like two, three years old, Food relationship is more important than nutrition in this in in terms of priority. Now it doesn't mean you prior you don't prioritize nu nutrition. It just means that this is when you start to develop the relationship, or help them develop a relationship with food where they understand how to eat when they're hungry, when they're not hungry. Do they they eat food when it's meal time and when it's not meal time they don't eat? That kind of stuff. Um, that's something I wasn't super aware of um, with little ones, but it, we just don't know how to do it. We, we, we learned how to eat from our parents and their parents who all learned how to eat when there was no food. Mm -hmm. So it's a totally different game. The different game that mindset. we learned yeah. or the strategy we learned when we were kids is you better finish everything on your plate or your ground. You're not leaving until you clean. That's now, right. what are we seeing, Sal, as far as uh, you know, like the nutrients that children are getting? is it, Now, they're over-consuming, so I'm assuming that they would have an abundance of that, or are they also like – they're they're missing vital nutrients and then also over consuming on calories. Ten, what, depends yeah. if it's ultra processed, right? Yeah, like, no, you see that still. Yeah, yeah but, you're seeing nutrient deficiencies. Vitamin D is quite common. Magne same ones you find in adults. You're yeah. starting to see in in children um, so because they are eating now. A lot of processed foods are quote unquote fortified, but the nutrients that you're getting in them aren't pretty aren't very well absorbed or they're not balanced. Sometimes you have too much of some th stuff and not enough of others. But they're not getting lots of fruits, vegetables, and fresh meat or and eggs and stuff like that. In fact, the only unprocessed foods that kids eat regularly now are like milk, um, eggs, maybe meat here and there. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is processed. So this this year, you approved a a company for us to work with that is a, a children's um, multivitamin. Yeah. What was the thought process on that for you when you gave the green light to Katrina? To well, they that? have they have first off they with the supplement market's not regulated, so you'd want to have a company that allows for third party testing, so that it has what it says it has, <clears throat> that also uses the right amounts, so it's not too much, not too little. And kids' multivitamins are typically glorified candy. So have you ever seen like the gummy yeah. candies or whatever? Oftentimes too high in vitamin A, not, not high enough on other stuff. And it's like candy. It's like you're just you giving your kids- the sugar with it. Yeah. yeah, you're just giving your kids like little pieces of candy every single day so and not it, doing a whole lot. I mean, is it something that's sweet enough the kid will eat it? Or like how yes. do they- Oh, okay. So they now still- Now if your kid eats gummy bears every day, maybe not. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's my, I mean, Aurelius. Oh yeah. Max, Max had it like uh, he was, ate it like he thought it was candy. So yeah. he thought it was sweet, but it, yeah. I, when I, I tasted it and I didn't think it was that, it didn't taste like it was, uh, like, no, like it's, the Flintstone vitamin. No, it's something. naturally sweetened. It's like monk fruit. Oh, I was going to ask what it is. So it's monk fruit. Yeah. So it's using. not, it's not like sugar and stuff like no that. No artificial sweeteners and no. things like that in it. Oh, okay. No, that's no, good. no, no, no. Yeah. So this is a good, uh, it's a good company and you know, it's as good for, if you're to fill any nutritional gaps with your kids. Now, if your kids eat lots of whole natural foods in a well in a wide variety, especially if they eat lots of things like fresh meat and eggs and stuff, then they're probably um, okay. Um, but uh, the, the amounts in these multivitamins aren't so high either where you're worried about- Over. Yeah, that's another thing you gotta be careful for is you take these vitamins and they're so high in certain nutrients that like, oh, I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah. And you take them on a, on a regular basis. Right. Anyway, Justin, I wanna ask you, You've had this note up for a while. I want to know what the hell it is. Which one? The man with the three legs. <laughs> so, okay, yeah, I was um, I, scrolling around and like looking at uh, all that's interesting. I think this is where I got it from. It's a page that we didn't, we're not recommending or anything, but I should have. But uh, this is this is one of those pages that like brings up uh, old stuff that I was like totally unaware of, like this freak show, sideshow kind of um people that like it and it's it's sad on some level but some of them are you're just like i like what like i i would have never guessed so there was a man with three legs like legitimately had three legs and two two dicks whoa uh, yeah to go with that and i was like wow what? that's way more interesting than the three legs exactly right and so he had two crotches therefore he had two, two crotches so really what happened was uh, they, he absorbed a a, a, a twin <laughs> oh, and so he's wow. basically part his twin in himself. Functional? Oh, that guy. Functional? Oh, yeah, I've seen him yeah, before. Yeah, functional. And, and had kids, you know, married. He had kids too? Yes. Were they both functional? I don't know. That's why I was so curious. I was like, I wonder if they both worked, you know? And like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> like, I was just fascinated by hey, that. You go back to back, right? Yeah. Well, this one, like, this one's done, but we got this one go. It sounded Sorry, like. Sorry, Doug. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, well, Sal's going to be happy. I think he's Italian. <laughs> His name is Frank Lentini. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> Frank Lentini, you know, the man common. with two weenies. <laughs> wow, dude. Frank the, the tricycle. Yeah. You know, like, he, man, yeah. he's just. You know, I've been accused of times. But that's the funny. That's always the joke yeah. is like, oh, a tripod, you know, and it's like, you know, the, he's got the third leg. But it's literally, he has like two crotches. Imagine, imagine how confusing this is. This is the only time this has ever happened. One man. Is I, never, I've never I, can, I can't think of any other example in history Bro, he other would than be, this guy. This guy would be a badass at Taekwondo, right? Like, he. <laughs> 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 if his foot, that one leg doesn't look very functional. It's yeah. like just a prop. You know? well, I'm curious if he has if both his things are working. Both wings? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, they right? did. They, functioning. Yeah. Wow. He was actually born in Sicily. Wow. They both yeah. were functioning. Oh my god. Could be a relative, actually. Wow. So he gets two. So boners, he, could he double orgasm? Boners. I mean, if they're functioning. Uh, it doesn't specify. No, that. I got. Okay. No. 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 Hold Powerful. on. Powerful. Hold on a second. Okay. He has one central nervous system. Yeah. So that means that they both get it. They he gets erections. So it's like a lighter. It's no, they're both simultaneous. So it's not like he uses one and then it doesn't affect the other one. He probably orgasms with both at the same time. Uh, it's one CNS. Uh, Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, imagine if they you imagine know, you could alternate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give this one a rest. Yeah. Come over here. Hey, babe. What's who's, who's <laughs> the, what's his face? Who's the famous porn star that everyone knows? What's his name? You know that uh, musical chairs. Uh, you know what I mean? Like what's oh, the famous porn Ron star? Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy. Eat your heart out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Disgusting. Anyway, that guy's. I guess is, he's my new favorite specimen. Oh, wow. Right. That's a, that's a that's weird. Uh, hey, you know how confused you'd be hearing those footsteps. You imagine in the dark. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. This is wild. Dude, did you guys see, I um, I got hit with this ad and uh, I actually was curious. And so it was actually like a 30 minute, it was only on those like short ads on Instagram. But then if you clicked on it, you watch the full 30 minutes. I couldn't finish the full 30 minutes because I was like so disgusted in it. Was, uh, it was a Tony Horton ad. Hmm. And it did, was- Did you hear a who? Sorry. Did it? <laughs> Sorry. It's your shirt that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all related. He, he, um, what, I didn't know what happened to him. He had some disease. Oh, wait. That did happened. He have a heart attack or something he, like that? No, so he had some muscular disease. Yeah, some muscular oh. disease and he lost all this muscle. He was yeah. hospitalized. I, this, I didn't even know that, I right? I didn't know it either. So I guess he had kind of fallen off for a long time. Everybody was like, where's he at? This had happened to him. He's come back. He's, he's healthier again and better. 
And he's now using that story to peddle a supplement. Like attributing it all towards like plant-based protein. And it's like, it, yeah, it's plant-based protein. I think even like- Like this a, save my life type of deal? Yeah, bro. Yeah, like really pulling the heartstrings to yeah. sell products. Like it actually hooked, I actually didn't even realize I was watching like a supplement ad at first. It was just like his story. Mm. And it, and he even had like, like another girl was telling a story like how mind-blowing like this supplement was. And so it, it got me, it hooked oh, me in. Oh, I see this. And I'm, wa I'm watching it. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know. Oh, that's where he's been. And I'm, and I'm like, I wonder how many people that really kind of pulled in. Oh, I'm, it, I know? pulled it pulled me yeah, in just I mean, from like, the story. And it took me at least, I don't know, a few minutes into it before I realized what was happening. And I went, oh, shit. This is such a, a powerful, a powerful uh, uh, tool that, that a lot of these influencers all, will use to, to just bro, push bullshit. How greedy do you have to be to do that? I know. Part of me is like, gets upset with that. Part of me is like, well, I mean. He had something terrible happen to him and he spun it into a new business. So part of me, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like good on him. Yeah. yeah I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, okay. So what, okay. Uh, my family's starving. I'm out on the street. It's do or die. This happens to me. I, I lost all my money. Like, would I do something crazy like this? Probably if it, if it came to my family, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like the, but I don't think he was hurting like that. No. I think yeah. the guy's worth a lot of money, man. So I don't think- What that, happened? What was his disease? Does anybody I know? forgot the name uh, of it. It's called Ramsey Hunt, I think. Oh. Ramsey Hunt. Yeah. It was a, like a muscular atrophy type of disease, right? That it, <clears throat> is was that like what it is? It's like a away. form of shingles. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, that's messed up. Eesh. You know, I never liked him, so it doesn't really it doesn't change my opinion of the guy. I don't know him, so I don't know how. I, I don't would, know. I don't. Okay, yeah, thank you. I don't know yeah. the guy, so when I say I don't like him, I don't like the whole his whole fitness advice media thing. It was like the part of the fitness industry that's like. Beat yeah, the I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm kind of doing the same thing everybody was doing. Yeah, yeah. I'm careful not to judge because there's been too many times in this this show where we've met somebody and I like didn't like and them, cool. and I didn't like them, or somebody I really liked and yeah. then I can't stand them. So I'm like, I don't know, but. That regardless of about him, that was a dirty way. That's a dirty way to sell supplements. I don't yeah. care. I don't care how. I don't care if I love the guy when I meet him. I would still say that to you, like, bro, that was that's like, a. I don't know. Part that's of a me dirty too, angle. Part of me really that, funneling it just to that one thing. It's yeah, like, come on, that's not the whole story. Again, I you know, part of me is almost like God, because that's gonna be terrible, right? You're like a fitness icon. You make a yeah. ton of money with P90X, all that stuff. You're supposed to be this like trainer that's like healthy. Then you get this debilitating disease. I mean, uh, I can kind of understand. Like, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna reinvent See, myself. At, he I'm he use launched this. a whole new yeah. supplement line on help help build muscle over 60 years old. And the the, the I'm looking at the it. The crux at, of the marketing is around. I looked at the products. There's nothing in there that's. No, yeah, that's nothing what I mean. Groundbreaking. It's, it's nothing groundbreaking, but yeah. they use like this crazy story of what he went through, and then now he's back and saved his life, and it's just like, <laughs> oh god, that's yeah, man, cringe, that's the most man. powerful tool is the story. Yeah, you know, something that's like yeah. pulls the heartstrings, especially if you know people love Americans love, especially a, a, like a the underdog, yep. or like the overcomer. Yeah, yep, like so, come back from the dead type. Speaking of, deal. of influencers and the underdog, you, you know, um, first of all, one, I didn't know that. David Goggins only does like a couple interviews ever. I, I thought I've seen so many clips yeah. of him yeah. and just assumed he does tons of interviews. It's and like all just Rogan. Two. Yeah. Rogan. Two and then our, our dude at modern wisdom with uh, Chris Williamson. Oh, two. That wow. is, that is, that is all. That's all he does. And he's got that interview dropping with Chris Williamson coming up. I know we interviewed Chris in this, this coming month. And I heard a clip. This is how kind of crazy Goggins is. Goggins made, okay, he he took all the the hate comments that were said on Instagram and his YouTube and also like that, recorded himself saying those comments to himself <laughs> on video, and then made it into a mixtape, and then he listens to that <laughs> shit when he fucking runs. Yeah. And she's like, why do you do this shit? It's half comical, and it's half, um, it's half inspiring. What the fuck, wow. bro? Dude, sixteen year old me would be like, "Fuck!" Oh that. yeah, bro. Like, that's exactly what I would have fed off. Badass, of. dude. Oh, dude. Like, you know, he's, he's a fucking savage. And dude. I know he's he's not our style as far as like you know, because people ask why we hadn't brought him on. So, yeah, it's kind of the opposite message of what we try and present to people. Some of that, but it as does, an individual, but exactly does not mean. And I, no. I want to make that I, I clear on the, the show because I've actually sure. made comments before in the yeah. forum, and I think people probably assume that I don't like him or I'm hating, but because we don't have him on the show 
And because like we, I say, I don't agree with the way the messaging he's giving. Cause we try and I think we come from a total different perspective as coaches and the general population. That doesn't mean yeah. I don't think he's a badass, And yeah. I don't think that that's just fucking using rad. hate is fuel. Oh just, my God. Uh, yeah. Who else did that? Didn't, wasn't there somebody that we knew? Was it really? Was it Mark Masteroff that said that he would take people's comments that would say this won't work, you can't do this? He'd put post it post it notes with them up in his mirror. Well, so I used some to put, of the best athletes would do that. You know, like Michael Jordan was notorious for that, uh, and they, they would like tally it up at the end and like like uh, you know address each one of the haters like specifically. Well, mm -hmm. I had I had post it notes all over my bathroom of like. So like most of them were like goals, but then I had one that was up there that was right where I brushed my teeth at that was, uh, it said beat Neil and Neil at the time was like the, the top trainer in the gym. And I got really irritated because I have that personality of like, uh, I yeah. like coming to people and wanting to learn, pulling on your shirt, yeah. being like, Hey, you know, teach me. Type this must of have been when you were a new trainer. I was yeah, brand new. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. well, once somebody me crosses you, I was yeah. the same. I would because like, I know. Oh, okay, I'm gonna. I, I know who you guys are talking I'm about. Come after this motherfucker. You steamrolled him. So oh. it must have been when you first started. Oh, and I did. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, it only took me about a year or so to catch this dude, and I remember that. But that was it was beat Neil. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I had that because he blew me off like that, and so it it, it stung, and so it stuck with me, and so I had that up there every day, where it was like, little did he know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he created the monster. <laughs> yeah, yeah woken the beast. Oh, that's 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 wild. Man. Yeah, it, helps. Yeah. it helps to 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 use that. Some stuff people can be motivated by ha by hate on a consistent basis. I actually I, okay, so I don't. Uh, Patrick, I don't know but, if that's a great strategy yeah, for most people. So I, you up. I do think it is, but I think you need to have the self awareness of to not allow it not to not to identify with it. Yeah. Right? Can, yes. Like there's nothing wrong to me. I think I still to this day do that. Like if someone tells me I can't. Yeah, but or, you don't identify with it like that's you said. Right, which that's means right. you're not cuz then what happens is we have a good friend like this who yes, is I, so motivated by hate the same thing. that they're looking for it. Yeah. They need it. Yeah, they Without need it. it they, they yes. need it. Yes. Where I don't think I need it. I think it's I go like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, noted yeah, yeah extra yeah. motivation for me so i mean patrick bet david talks about it in his book your next five moves is being able to utilize that as as fuel and it's very powerful like i even think that the psychology around it right because it hits like an insecurity or there's like there's a yeah. lot of potential fuel there and so to not utilize it would be i think naive but then to be careful because you can then identify yeah it and then right. when you need it you end up creating it right you so I, creating, I do think it there's does some build up your self-belief on some level right because you can overcome uh you know a lot of the, the 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 forces against you but yeah if you keep feeding that and that's your 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 only well that you're going to you know inevitably that leads into a dark path. you become yeah. the very monster that you are constantly fighting against yeah yeah, yeah. i got something interesting this is kind of off topic but really cool i learned about this this group of people in the world maybe doug can look this up the baiju people look up b-a-j I think it's okay. I thought the not notes by said, you. I thought by the you. notes said by you or by you. It might I thought it was a bougie thing. The bougie people. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not your notes. I was like, <laughs> it's not like Louisiana bougie bougie people. I was like, I want to go there. Yeah, who are these bougie people. Yeah, look them up, people. Doug, and, and pull it up. Pull up a picture of these. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so this is a this is a now it's a shrinking population of people, but it's the only people in the world that live exclusively on water. Live they, on the water. They live on the water. And they have a genetic mutation. Kevin Costner there? Or what? They have a genetic mutation that they've adapted because they've been doing this for who God knows how many thousands They're of years. Theater webbed? No. What? They could dive to depths that no uh, one else can dive to. Uh, yes. Uh, I've, they can I've hold their these, breath and this. go down and dive to insane. So they're some of the, they're like some of the world's best natural divers. Like, like spear fishermen. Yes. And, yeah. and they build structures that float on the water and they're hold the whole from birth till death. Wow. They live on the water. That's kind of cool. What Isn't that crazy? Where, where did you say it was? Where are they at? It looks like like the Philippines yeah, maybe Doug, or where, Indonesia. Where? Oh, Indonesia. Doug, look up their genetic mutation. I want to read up a little bit more on that because that was what was fascinating to me that they've been doing this for so long that like like world like now they have gills behind their ears. Well, like champion divers will try to hang with them and be like, "Wow, this is this is like an old man, 80, 80 year old just go down." Yeah. On one breath. What does it say there? <laughs> One such gene caused people uh, blood to be squeezed out of the limbs and non-essential areas of the body so that the brain, heart, and lungs could continue to receive oxygen. So that's what? the mutation. The there. C nomad. Is there, yes. do, they, do we have an example of like how? Another thing is they've evolved to have bigger spleens. They have bigger spleens. So their blood is carrying oxygen. 
their blood carries more. So oxygen. I mean, can wow. we, do, is there some is there some stuff Crazy. on like they they they. they more than a minute longer than the the best divers. Look how adaptable like, we are. It's crazy. Or is it like so? Is is it like negligible? No, it's not negligible. That's for sure. But I'd love to look and see like yeah, I would how, love to see like the difference, they, right? Like how far are they diving? Like you know, so many meters deeper than the the best divers. Are they? Can they stay hold their breath longer? What do you got? Yeah, I'm trying to get that. So the the deepest dive was 259 feet. Whoa, which is very wow. deep. Whoa, just over three minutes. See, that's a um, lot of pressure too. Like, tremendous. Get, whoa, whoa. They can hold their breath for over five minutes. Two hundred and fifty nine feet. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's insane. You know what's crazy about that too is you have to do that in stages. You yeah. can't just go down and come up. Oh yeah. You, you, if you come up to so yeah, have you ever swam to the bottom of like a twenty foot pool? Like that's yeah. like a well. No, what happens at deal. those at those depths is the pressure causes some of the gases in your system and blood to liquefy and they and then it goes to different parts of the body i hope i'm getting this right and then if you come up too fast it gets turns back into a gas in the wrong parts of the body and you get what's called as i think it's called the bends the bends, the yeah. bends yeah. where they get this they, it's like a, it could kill you Never heard yeah. Of that. yeah like tremendous pain and well this is where the keto diet i guess is shown to be helpful right no because not for protective? that that's for um i thought it's for di uh, no that's for re rebreathers Oh, so Navy SEALs will use uh, what are called rebreathers that, so that there's no bubbles coming up when they're trying to be stealth. Mm -hmm. But it causes so much hyperoxygenation that it can induce things like seizures mm. and the ketogenic uh, So diet. these people can hold their breath for over five minutes wow. while highly trained divers from other populations can only hold it for three or four. So that's a big difference. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. That's almost double. Isn't that wild? Yeah, that is wild. There's also that's this. That's I mean, like, if it was like, oh, 20 more seconds than the well, best time, it's like, well, okay, I remember. I remember cool. you brought up a fact a long time ago where we were talking about, like, you know how you, you're in the water and you prune after a long yeah. time? And, oh. like, why we actually do that is for a better grip. I've, better grip. I've shared that fact that's the so CNS. many times. I so, so many people had no idea. You know, I, I didn't I thought it was your aware. skin absorbing the water. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, it, but uh, that's the CNS. That's your CNS. So you can grip that. things underwater. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's fascinating. This is interesting. So they, uh, this one claims that they can stay underwater for as long as 13 minutes at depths of around 200 feet. Well, okay. So what I was trying to figure out <laughs> when so you cool. said when you said 259 feet that they've they've done the amount of time it would take just to swim down that. Like that's what I meant by what I said. Have you ever yeah. swum down the bottom of a 20 foot? Oh pool? yeah, knowing you have to go back up. Yeah, you got to go down almost what twelve x that, yeah. and yeah. then you also have to come all the way back yeah. up. Like that. And would remember, take some you have time. to. I don't know how it's many. Frightening. I don't know how many feet, but if you've watched free divers, they have to. They go down as deep as they can, and then what they do is they come up and they pause. Got to equalize or to something. equalize yeah. at certain stages to allow the the their right. Body so to imagine how many times yeah. just to get down to that depth and how long that would take. That would take like several minutes. So there's imagine. also along these lines of adaptations and, and interesting facts. There's also this region or this this I want to say this town or this population in Mexico of these people who run. They live in a mountainous region, I think. Mm -hmm. And they run from like the second they can walk to the day that they die. And this is like what they do is they run and run and run. And you'll see there's like 80, 90 year olds continuing to run. They run mostly barefoot and they have this tremendous stamina and endurance, no injuries. Isn't like Kenya like that? Isn't that how Kenya is or no? That's also a yeah. big part of their culture. But this is a, it's a region in Mexico. I don't know if Doug can find. It's in the Chihuahua area of Mexico. Oh, okay. They're being well, chased, oh, by the run. chased by the little, little dogs. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> this is the stupid. Yo, Carol Taco Bell. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a commercial. Come on. What I, happened I, to that commercial? That was know. a very popular yeah. commercial. I think it got uh, <laughs> Don't flagged. come at me, yeah, dude. That was a real flagged. commercial. Yeah. It says, born to run, secrets of what? What is that? Tara, how do you say it? Yeah, so, I mean... Tara who Humara, I guess. Is Those are that's the paper. Those are the people. The book yeah. probably references it. Yeah, hmm. and 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 some of them will make shoes. They'll cut like a. They'll take like a because they're poor. They'll take a, a tire. They'll cut a strip of the tire off and just slap it at the bottom of their feet. And it's like a sandal, and they'll run for like thirty miles, like every day. Oh, you know what? Talking about shoes, uh, you know this whole like AI thing is is that's another market that's gonna get disrupted. Like is the take a shot. To be able to <laughs> you don't say Adam. <laughs> 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 I know. Tell I us know. about it. I no, know. keep going, bro. I, I'm just, I have to do that. Well, so Nike. So and of course, Nike's trying to, um, you know, what? Do, what do they do to stop this? Right. You, we yeah. brought up with your daughter and stuff like that. The what's been happening with the market with these, uh, you know, the, the the fakes that are looking so real and stuff. So Nike has got this new thing out where you can buy refurbished uh, Nikes. 
So let's say like someone like me who's got, I've had a pair of Jordans for four or five years and they start to wear a little bit that use. They have now a, 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 I can send them in, they refurbish them and then they put them back online and they sell them for a ridiculously like, Oh wow. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool. So that's just, brilliant. It's that sounds great. Make them like new again, just by then they look, them they look, they look brand new afterwards. It's Crazy. really, it's really cool. It's just getting really popular right now, it, but it just makes me think like I was actually thinking about my, my shoe collection. That's probably gonna be worth nothing in another year or two. So I was like, fuck, that's great. Um, cause I, that was like half the, like, oh, I'm holding on to these. You know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll flip them. <laughs> so retirement kind plan. Of an investment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, if it was a retirement plan, like <laughs> social security right now, fuck, I'm fucked in yeah, 10 yeah. years. Right. So. Better than FTX. But yeah. So, yeah, so um, yeah, that's, that's an, that's an industry that I think is going to be really interesting because, you know, the, the stuff that probably makes up shoes and, and the, the ability to do that, I think is, is, isn't that complicated when you think about 3d printing and the things that we can, that we <laughs> I just can. picture like <laughs> you're, you're, you're hella poor in the future, but you're hella nice shoes. Yeah. How do you afford those shoes? Yeah, uh, I, I invested a lot in yeah, shoes was, when I was younger. I was really well, hoping this took off. <laughs> yeah. So um, my, my theory is it's going to, it's going to really drive that. I mean, I think that. We're, I think right now, do you really think it's going to hammer the, the shoe mark? I think that we're going to, I think in our lifetime, um, shoes will, not, and I'm trying to think of an example of something that was like so crazy expensive. And then now it's just, it's you're super cheap, right. That to have it. Right. That's how, like, I think shoes are going to become well, I mean, really, really like cheap. That. It's interesting. Cause it, it seems the more popular, I don't know that a lot of new designs out are like super like. Um, are more popular than the old, like nostalgic kind of shoes. Uh, I don't know if, if you know this. Are you saying they are? Or they, where, I've like, so in terms, well, I guess Yeezys and all that, when that came out was mm -hmm. like, probably kind of took a lot of the market share versus like, say your old, like a uh, uh, version one Jordans. Oh, that'd be an interesting to, to search because I think that, um, you know, retro shoes are probably more popular than like new stuff. That's what yeah. I was. Uh, oh, I thought you were saying the opposite. No, I, was I thought you were the saying opposite. New, like, new stuff has been had sort of like yeah, flatlined. No, I, I think it's way more. Yeah, way more popular. To bring back Jordans and Yeezys and even Chucks. When are they going like, to bring back like uh, your retro shoes? Seem to be way yeah, more popular so it, than it, like to your point of that of like me just wanting to refurbish like those designs. Like I would be much more interested in that. Yeah, and that's why I think that's going to crush this market because those are already more popular shoes. There's already a fake market for it. It's like it's driving the prices down. It's becoming so competitive. It's becoming a thing now where kids openly buy the fakes because they're like, why wouldn't I? They look just as good as the fucking real ones. It's mm -hmm. like, so what? You get the box. You get the Jordan box. Like mm -hmm. whoever doesn't. I, I mean, I throw my boxes away anyways and put them in different containers. So yeah. what do you care if it's if it's fake? If the average ninety nine percent of the people wouldn't be able to tell. You know. So who cares? Yeah. No. I think. When are they going to bring back uh, British Knights? That's all I want. <laughs> you know I mean? I'm wearing you know what, LA gears, bro. Dude. Check yeah. out. You know what did come back. Doug, look up uh, uh, Reebok pumps for sale. Watch how much. Oh, too. yeah. Oh, the old ones? Bro, yes. Pumps, of course. Yeah, I almost, I almost. Remember that annoying I ass kid that it. before he did anything athletic? Well, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they even make them now to look Didn't make retro and old like they've been worn for 10 years. And there's, wow. and I think they sell like for like 600 Wait bucks. Wait a minute. They make them look old? Yeah. Go, go like, or like look up uh, um, Stock X. Doug and then uh, Reebok pumps because you're, what you're looking at are a bunch of like With the big old basketball. Ones, like, yeah, it was a little dude, basketball and like, they had a squeeze. <laughs> yeah, so cheesy. I, yeah, I totally wanted those back in the day. Everybody did. There you go. There they all are. Wow. Yeah. That was the era of gimmicks, of shoe gimmicks. Uh huh. Yeah. They were cool though. They were. It they was were. a big. It was a big deal to get those, man. Them, them, and Jordans like were. were yeah, you're either a Jordan or a, a pumps guy. Yeah. 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 I was, like, yeah. I was a kid. Other? Kids. Yeah. Or kids. <laughs> it's your yeah, British Knights or that, the British Knights were the ones that lit up, right? No. British Knights Those was just the ones that LA Payless. Gear. Was it LA Gear yeah, that lit yeah, up? British Knights that pay less shoes. Was it LA Gear? I don't that lit remember up? which one. Who lit up? Who lit up first? That, that was, was later. That was LA Gear. No, no, it was LA Gear. Yeah. They, yeah, they were yeah, all, they had the lights and the the heels. My uh, son has uh, and, rain, and the, rain boots that do that. They had like tassels the ever. and shit. Like, like all this like, no, I bought, stuff. I bought, I don't remember who made them, but it was a basketball shoe and the commercial showed a catapult in the heel. What? Yes. Nike shocks. You no, mean? it no. was before uh, that. No, it was. I don't remember who made yeah, it. Converse or someone. They were. It was. This is the year. This was the decade of gimmicky basketball shoes. Yeah. It's like this has a catapult in the heel. I'm like, oh fuck, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna jump hella high with those. Yeah. Didn't do anything. Nope. That reminds me. What's that brand right now? It's really popular on social media. The the insoles. 
and the guy the he he's at it on a basketball court and that he shows like the like he bends them and they shoot all the way up to like the, the hoop. <laughs> yeah, that. it's such, it's such a good ad. This will do it for you. Yeah, because as a teenage kid, mm -hmm. I was probably like, oh, shit, I gotta get those insoles. <laughs> hey, I got I got a shout out uh, before we 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 uh, step off here. Big little feelings. Great page on Instagram. This is uh, these are toddler experts. So for parents out there, it's a huge page, two and a half, two point nine million followers. But great advice for raising kids and toddlers and stuff like that. Yeah, it's a good one. Check it out. Hey, look, check this out. You're not what you eat. You're what you digest. If you eat a high-protein diet, if you're a high-fuel athlete or fitness fanatic, you know that sometimes it can be hard to digest all the protein, fats, and carbohydrates that you put in your body to fuel your workouts. Well, this is maybe due to a lack of digestive enzymes. In fact, as you age, your body produces less digestive enzymes. Well, there's a company called Masszymes that makes digestive enzymes for fitness fanatics like us. Go check this company out. Go to masszymes.com. That's M-A-S-S-Z-Y-M-E-S.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off any order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Kristen Hauk. Do you guys consider body top types with training and nutrition? Of all the things that I consider when I'm trying to individualize somebody's training and nutrition, at the top of the list uh, is somebody's behaviors, um, their kind of mental state, psychology. Then I look at what's going to be the most effective considering those things. And way, way down the list is like body type. Yeah, their so, taste in music may be about the same. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's such a general thing, like to look at someone and see some great marketing type. tool, however. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not very effective. Now, it's effective marketing. I could put together programs based on quote unquote body types, and you're going to want to buy it because you'll identify with one of these, like, oh, That's this is me. This is for pear shaped I'm, people yeah. or apple shaped people. Well, whatever. there's a lot of correlation that goes with it. That's why. Because I'm it's like, oh, shape. there's a lot of, like, when you look at somebody who is like an ectomorph, uh, they tend to have a lot of things in common. They have a lesser appetite. They seem to be more active people. They fidget a lot of time. They have smaller bone structure. And then, oh, they're also really lean. And so I think there's a lot of correlation to that, that then you can then piggyback off of that and say, oh, well, these body types need to eat this yeah. way, you know? So it's... Yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't... It's, but even for yourself, you, look. number one, you want to look at, like, what's realistic and doable for me? Like, what does this feel like for me? How do I feel about doing these things? What's realistic and doable? Then the next thing is considering that. So that's filter one. So think of it this way. Like you have a bunch of filters and you're putting rocks and sand and dirt through the filters. The first filter is to filter out the big rocks. And that is your, your, your psychology, your mental state. Like what is the most realistic for me to do consistently? Then the next filter is now that I know that, what's the most effective considering those parameters? And then after that, then you can look at, you know, male, female, body type, that kind of stuff. But by the time you get down to that filter, it really doesn't matter because mm -hmm. the first two, the ones that I labeled or that I just labeled are by far the most important will cover 99% of what you're looking to do. And there may be a percent there left with body type type stuff, but there's, there's really not much. By the way, body type, the whole body type theory was invented by a zoologist uh, who came up with, tried to come up with a way to describe people. Yeah. That and and by the way, in his descriptions include personality. This is where the whole like myth of like the fat jolly person came from. Oh, oh people, really? Yeah. So people <laughs> are endomorphs tend to be happy and jolly, and people who tend to have, you know, it's uh, what's that one study of the of the skull uh, where they study the bumps in the head, hmm. and then they try to tell you that your personality based on that. It's like along those lines. Wow. It's not much science behind it. Is what I'm trying to say. Mm, yeah, it's like astrology. <laughs> Next question is from Pete on the gram. When is an indivi individual better off hiring a coach versus following a program like MAPS? You're always better off hiring a person if they're a good coach. Yeah, nothing will beat that. Right. There's Even a MAPS program. Like that's the, oh, I think we don't, we've always admitted that. Now, uh, the, the challenge is uh, at, where's the, where's the threshold or where's the line of where uh, like you need to have a pretty dang good coach uh, before uh, it is actually better. And any if you're a subpar coach, then you're better off just following a MAPS program than having somebody who's not going to give you really good advice. So right. I think that's the challenge is knowing where that where that line is. But if it's a really good coach, if you have a really good coach... You're um, going to get a lot of insight individually that way. Well, yeah. And, and, and also like the... The need to be able to pivot. I mean, how often did you guys do this as as a coach? 
Um, I've got my workout plan for Susie. She's coming in in 15 minutes and I know what we're going to do. And then she gets there and we get in the first exercise and I can just see she's either off or I could tell she didn't sleep very well or she communicates that to me or I could see the way her body's moving or I noticed something for the first time that I hadn't seen in her before that, oh, we should probably correct that and that's more important. And then you pivot. Mm -hmm. And so, and if you were following a maps program and those things occurred, uh, you should still pivot and, and actually focus on and, and address that. Right. Mm -hmm. Or, and, and so a good coach sees these and calls the audible real time where like, we obviously can't do that in a digital program. That was a, a coach is a, a good coach is a guide and, and there's nothing that'll ever replace I don't know about ever. We were talking about all AI, so who knows? But up until now, nothing is more, nothing's going to give you a better guarantee of success, especially long term than a good guide or coach. Um, but they have to be good. But even, you know, even some of the more, the other, I guess, benefits or pros with like a MAPS program is it's inexpensive in comparison. Hiring a good coach is going to be a larger investment by far. Like mm -hmm. a good trainer, one on one, is going to be anywhere between sixty to one hundred twenty dollars or more per hour. An online coach is going to be hundreds of dollars every month. Uh, whereas a Maps program is a fraction of that, and you have lifetime access to it. Here's the best way to use a Maps program: if you're looking for long term success, the best way to use it is to follow a Maps program, then follow another Maps program, and then another one. Because each MAPS program is going to train you differently. It's going to teach you more about your body. And then after you go through nine months or a year of doing this process, then you can go back and you can start to modify and change them based off of your individual needs. This is when you start to learn how to train yourself, which you also have to do with a guide. When you train with a guide, what a good guide or coach will do is teach you, the best coaches will teach you how to start to figure this out for yourself, but it's a long process, right? So- that would be how yeah. I'd use a MAPS program. Well, I think the ultimate insurance, because like you're, it's really hard to find a great coach. Like this is something we get asked all the time. And, you know, there's obviously signs and red flags to look out for. And, but to be able to, even if you have like an average coach and, you know, they do, a, they do a good job of like showing up and taking you through workouts, like to now combo that with a MAPS program and, and get them on board with, teaching you like the concepts and and the right technique and how to perform these exercises within that structure would be like you know that's that's probably the best case scenario next question is from jen garner can i train for a bodybuilding show and a half marathon at the same time <laughs> <laughs> Terrible at idea. At the same time. No, no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> no, hold terrible on a second. Idea. Are we getting pumped? I don't even want to hear you. Hold on a second. She, not asked, she didn't ask if it was a good can idea. Can you? She said, can I? Okay, well, yes. Yeah, you, you can. totally can. You can also. <laughs> Are you going to do well? You can also no. try and practice meditation while listening to heavy metal. Yeah. I don't, well, I I don't do recommend it. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, you <laughs> yes, can also, that's a bad example. You should also wash your clothes in gasoline at the at yeah, campfire. Yeah. <laughs> So no, okay. So here's the deal. Um, you can do whatever you want. This is a terrible idea, though. If if you're asking if you should, this is a guaranteed road towards overtraining, injury, and sucking at both. You're going to suck at both. Yeah. They're so contradictory. And a bodybuilding show. By the way, you're not asking, can I lift weights yeah. and do a half marathon? You're asking about a show. Yeah, yeah. A show means you have contest yeah. prep. You are so depleted. Depleting yourself so, of nutrients and, and calories. And then like you do that? a half marathon. You're going to get sick. And you're then try to run on that? Dude. Yeah. yeah. I almost feel like Disastrous. this question is a joke. This has to be a joke. Right? I'm, I would serious. guess this. I'm not going to look. I don't know who this person is. I'm not, you know, but I would guess that this person has a dysfunctional relationship with exercise already if they're asking this. That they're probably already overtraining constantly. It's a pretty safe bet. And this is kind of, you know, par, par for the course for them. Terrible idea. If you did a show and a half marathon, you're, I'm going to guarantee you that you're going to hurt yourself, not feel very good. Um, yeah, and, and by the way, talk problems. about two of the most <laughs> extreme areas that like when I get somebody who's like addicted to marathon running or addicted to bodybuilding and stuff like that, like they're talk about a lot of dysfunction. Like those are two of the worst like when it comes to yeah. stuff like now, that. Now you could train with some bodybuilding style workouts and train to run with a long run a every now marathon. and then. Yeah, yes. yeah. No. But the show part, oh, if you've ever done pre-contest, you know, like what is it? What's a typical pre-contest? Sixteen to twelve weeks. Twelve weeks usually. Yeah. Is that right? So yeah. twelve weeks. Aside from maybe the first three or four weeks, after that, you're gonna you're gonna try to training for a half marathon during that period of time. That's silly. 
You can barely get through your workout, especially by the time. Oh, it's like a terrible four weeks idea. It hurts <coughs> my head to think about this. Yeah, it's a terrible idea. It's. A, I mean, you're far better off doing one than the other. Yeah, I mean, that's all. And I think that's. I think. Now, that's how would a, you do that? That's a great idea. You know, yeah. uh, focus on being a bodybuilder. Then and, reverse diet. Get yeah, healthy. Yep, yeah, and, and then, then reverse diet. Work. Build your metabolism back up, and then go train for your marathon afterwards. And then at the end of the year, uh, you're. I bet you'll look back and have seen like, oh, I, mean, I got lots of benefits from both of these, but. To do them at the same time is just, uh, it would be silly. It, make, it doesn't make any sense. Next question is from Mama to Mace. Which is better for you, whole or low-fat milk? All right, so- Whole milk. Next so question. long, yeah. yeah, so long as, the, as, as calories are not in the conversation here. In other words, if the whole milk is making you overeat, then we can make the argument that low-fat would be better. But let's just say that calorically, you know, hmm. caloric intake is good. Everything else is fine all things being considered so we can make a direct comparison, whole milk is healthier. In fact, I believe, and maybe Doug can confirm this, that non-fat milk was connected to bone fractures, to, mo to, to bone fractures. You, know, you might be thinking, how is that possible? Because milk is uh, supposed to be good for your bones. Well, the vitamin D that, that is in whole milk or that is in milk is fat soluble. So if you drink low-fat or non-fat milk, you're not absorbing the fat-soluble vitamins that, that are essential to help strengthen and build bone. Whole milk um, has all the essential nutrients, yeah. um, fats, proteins. It has some carbohydrates. It's you balanced. Can, though, you yeah. can now absorb um, your fat-soluble vitamins. Um, it's the way that milk is comes as a package. Yeah. So low-fat, by the way, low-fat, non-fat milk is is a um, a relic of the the fat is yeah. bad for you era. Aren't you going to get more of the lactose <clears throat> than low fat uh, as well as you like remove a lot of the uh, fat nutrients out of whole milk? It's the same. It's just now. Well, it's just the same, but now that's more highlighted. It's now just sugar protein right. in there. Um, but yeah, this it's a, it's a, what does that say? Low fat, uh, low milk intake. Oh, it's low milk, not low fat. I'm sorry. Yeah. Look I, up I non-fat milk and. Um, bone fractures. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, bone fractures. But yeah, um, this is a relic of the, the, the fat scare craze of the 80s and, and 90s. That's when, you know, before that, nobody had non-fat milk. In the I 60s, mean, when, 70s, when who you, the hell bought when, that? When you, I'm trying to think of a situation with a, a whole food where you extract something out of it and it's ever superior than it in its natural state. Is there an example of that? Like you you just talked about the eggs the other day and how now yeah. more stuff has come out that the whole egg is as long as it's the edible parts right right so so where in, where is it where we have found taking a whole food taking something away from it is superior to it in its whole state <clears throat> that's a good point yeah, I don't think I don't think there's for trying to make some kind of pharmaceutical out of it like no not that not yeah. not condensing it and then turning it into a drug or doing another like where it, where is it nutritionally healthier for you ever i don't think there's i don't i can't personally off the top of my head i, can't I cannot think of one, i cannot think of a situation well, where you would take a whole food well here let's let's think of extract some, something from it let's think of some examples uh whole eggs versus egg whites by the way that's also a relic of grains the, maybe of the fat you know is bad for you era right uh whole eggs better for muscle protein synthesis builds more muscle burns more body fat when calories are controlled for um, it's got brain healthy nutrients. Uh, it's got, uh, you know, folate in it and other nutrients that are essential for brain health. So egg whites, when all things are, con are controlled for are less healthy than whole eggs. Let's look at fruit. You could take fruit with its fiber and its skin and its seeds and all that, and you can extract just the juice. Now you have natural soda, essentially. Yeah. You just have sugar water, yeah. but whole fruit doesn't have nearly the, the, the potential negative effects. Right. Of fruit juice. Well, when you say like a wheat or something, because you have to process it down in order to make it like digestible. That's a good point. When you're, but that, yeah, that's a very good point. There are certain plants that, in order to be able to consume them, we have to, you have like, to strip it all the way down to like. Yeah, that's a good point. Because you can't I even wheat. Like it's comparing though, form. like a, a tree to like the fruit it bears, and saying like, yeah, you probably shouldn't yeah. eat the roots in the trunk. It's not going to be very just a fruit for it. So I don't think that's even an example of that. Like I can't yeah. think of a, a whole food. Where we where we extract something from it or take something like I'm off of you, it and I'm, then it's it's healthy. I'm telling you, for all of the history, yeah. for all of history, when we consumed milk, up until this 
baloney hypothesis that it was fat that was causing these heart attacks that were starting to appear up until the the seven country study, which was highly messed up and and uh, it was fake. It really didn't prove anything because they took out the countries that didn't fit that model. Up until that point, nobody drank anything other than whole milk. Then all of a sudden, fat became the enemy and there was a market for the dairy industry acted, right? Oh my God, everybody's getting scared of dairy because of this fat content. How do we continue to sell milk? Oh, low fat and non-fat milk. When we were kids and you went to your friend's house and you had a bowl of cereal, nine out of 10 times, it was low fat or non-fat milk. Nine out of 10 times. My house was the only one that had whole milk. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we thought it was disgusting. My parents were like, who's going to drink this water? Yeah. Let's have some whole milk. But that's that's really what it comes from. So uh, as long as your calories are controlled and you're drinking milk whole, don't go non-fat or, 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 or low fat. It's a waste of time. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So you can find Justin at uh, Mind Pump Justin on Instagram. You can find Adam on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 